Hits like Our Lips Are Sealed made the Go-Go's one of the most successful female bands of all time, and now the group's lead singer, Belinda Carlisle, is opening up about the struggles of a life lived in the rock and roll fast lane. It's a beautiful new memoir, very candid. It's called Lips Unsealed. From her 30-year battle with cocaine and alcohol addiction to her battle with an eating disorder, she talks so candidly about the dark side of being a music legend. We're going to talk to her live in just a moment. She's right here in the studio with us, but first, how about a look back? Belinda Carlisle first burst on the music scene in 1981 as a lead singer of the iconic girl group, The Go-Go's. They made history with their success, becoming the first all-female band to ever write all the songs and play all the instruments for a number one album. After riding a wave of hits, Belinda went solo. and then top the charts with Heaven is a Place on Earth. But behind all the glamour of her success, there was pain. She publicly struggled with her weight from the time she was a young girl with taunts like Olympa and spent much of her life addicted to drugs until finally in 2005, she emerged on the other side, clean, and sober. And joining us now live, music icon, Belinda Carlisle. Is it a trip down memory lane for you too? When we play a piece like that and <laughs> seeing the old yeah. footage and things like that? Yeah, it doesn't seem uh, like it was that long ago, a lot of uh -huh. that footage, I mean, like it, like it was yesterday. But it's, music's so powerful for people. It just puts you back in a certain time and place. But I have to tell you, I have not finished reading your book. I began reading it. And it is so refreshingly honest. <laughs> and candid, and it's inspirational too, Belinda. Right. Why did you decide to write it now? Well, I mean, I, I always toyed with the idea of, of writing a book, and, and I, I've, I've known that I've had an extraordinary mm -hmm. life, and, and I always thought there would need to be an angle on it. I didn't know what the angle would be until uh, age 50 when I started writing the book. I'm, I'm 51 now. Um, I think, you know, besides being a rock and roll tale, I think it, it, it's a book about how you know you can be late in life and still make the changes uh, that you feel you need to make never too late it's never too late to change now yeah and you were talking about your there's there's an assumption that many people have if you're living the lifestyle that you lived you know rock and roll baby and you know, music and mm -hmm. and all that and you said that you were more than willing to live up to that uh, that role of um, being uh, an, an addict, and that's it's an assumption that a lot of people have. Well, I mean, being a being in a rock and roll brand uh, allows you to behave a certain way, and people have expectations mm. that you're going to be a flake, and you're going to give them, you know, uh, well, flakiness. And, and right. so I was more than happy to to give that to them. And I, you know, people let let. Uh, I was able to, to, to behave and, and not mm -hmm. really have anybody tell me otherwise. And because people expect that of a musician. Yeah. Or they did back then. I don't know about these days. But right. back in the 80s, it seemed like everybody was doing drugs. So. Right. And, and not making excuses and not trying to say that was right, but just saying that was an assumption that, that a lot of people had. And also that in, on top of that, dealing with depression. Well, I, I got it ass backwards. I thought, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> Rock and roll, thought, baby. I thought that um, that if I uh, if, if I, I was depressed, and that's why I, I was drinking and using. But little did I know, it was I got it all backwards, and and and. Um, I was depressed because a lot of a lot of uh, because of, of the, the the circle mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. shame and that goes along with addiction. You were trying to hide it from your family. You, oh, you didn't want them to know about what you were doing. And well, my husband had really. I mean, until he read the book, he had no idea about how bad it was towards really? the end. I mean, I did a pretty good job of hiding it for from a lot of people. I mean, the people who worked with me that were really close to me. I mean. After I did get mm -hmm. clean and sober, mm -hmm. um, they said, you know, we were really worried you were going to die. And I didn't really realize that, um, well, you know, some people, my, my husband didn't know. I mean, I was away from home a lot, so. Yeah. And you, and you also talk about, I mean, if, if that's not all enough, your weight issues. That's right. saying that at, at one point when you went solo, you were weighing yourself like 10, 15 oh, God, times that was a day. The worst. 
I don't even, you know, I mean, in some ways food is, it, the food issues were worse because it, at least with drugs and alcohol, you, it's abstinence and you have to eat every day to survive. And I had a terrible relationship with food where it was almost sort of like a bulimia where um, if I did eat something wrong, I would, you know, be on the treadmill for mm -hmm. hours and hours and, and where I would beat myself up and thought, well, if I ate a bite of that cookie, then I would just eat as many calories and count them as I went along mm. up to five and six thousand a day. So, so it was, like one you know, I mean, it's still, it all yeah. comes from the same place, you yeah. know, the eating, the, the, the addiction. That. It's that hole in the soul. Mm -hmm, it is. Well, you talk openly about, about that, but you also talk about the good times, too, which is great. I well, mean, you've been married since uh, for 24 years. Yeah. You have a, a great son who's about to go off to college, like a lot of families you're dealing with the, <laughs> yeah. the, the kid going off to school. Uh, how were you able to, in the, in the Hollywood lifestyle, maintain um, this this family this happy family life. Well, I mean, we haven't lived in in uh, the states for 18 years. We're we're out in and we're in France. I can um, hear a little bit of the accent. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I can hear a little bit of the accent. Oh, you do? In your voice. Just a little Just bit. A tiny bit. Just I've been here for bit. 18 years. I've been uh -huh. a long time. Uh -huh. um, I think. There's, it's, we were away from all the Hollywood stuff, which I think is part of it. And also, I mean, with our marriage, I mean, we don't really have a conventional sort of marriage where we're together 24-7. There's a lot of separation and because of the nature of what I do and the nature of, of what my husband likes to do. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably part of the secret is a lot of, a lot of space. Yeah, and it works for you. That's, that's the bottom line. Exactly. It works for you. We are so excited. You and the girls are going to be back July 6th, exactly. June 16th. July. Is no, July 16th. Yeah, it's July our 16th. farewell tour. Yeah. And uh, it's the last tour that we're going to be doing together as, as the Go-Go's. Well, we are stoked that you're going to be here at our summer concert series. I'm July excited. 16th. Thank you. So we'll see you then. Great. Belinda. Thank and you. And thank you very much. And you can read an excerpt from Belinda Carlisle's book, Lips Unsealed, at our website, abcnews.com slash books.